Uh, so a couple things before I get started. First, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, this is definitely the biggest uh, crowd I've ever seen for a WebAssembly talk. You are all here for WebAssembly, right? It's not, you're, okay, just making sure you're not in the wrong room. Uh, let's see, second, I apologize if the reflection off my head is uncomfortable for some of you. The, the lights here are pretty intense. Wasn't counting on that. All right, so uh, my name is Kevin Hoffman. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Cosmonic, which is a WebAssembly PaaS. I uh, created the Web, WebAssembly open source project called Wasm Cloud. Uh, wrote a couple of books, and I'm very easily nerd sniped. All you have to do is say one or two uh, distributed systems buzzwords, and I'll wake up a week later with a thousand open browser tabs. So my goal for this session is to hopefully make it so that you will want to leave and go and start playing with this stuff and uh, explore it. So uh, that's, that's the goal. So uh, basically going to go through some layers. At the base layer, I'm going to talk about what WebAssembly is. So actually, I need to pause before that. Uh, I checked that you're all in the right room, but uh, how many of you have used WebAssembly? That is insane. OK. Um, how many of you are sick of hearing about WebAssembly? Uh, a couple in the back. I see you. Um, so another goal is to hopefully try and convince you that all of the hype around WebAssembly isn't just hype and that there's actually some meat on this. So after I go through WebAssembly, we'll talk about WASM Cloud. Then I'll talk about how you can build all sorts of things on top of WASM Cloud. And the thing that I'm going to talk about today is event sourcing. Uh, and then hopefully I'll be able to get to the demos fairly quickly so we can get to QA. Um, I can, I'm going to skim through this fairly quickly. Uh, WebAssembly is an open standard. Uh, and uh, the, the usual buzzwords are that it's safe and secure, it's fast and efficient, uh, polyglot, and portable. Wasm Cloud is, uh, how many of you have heard of Wasm Cloud? Okay, that's also insane. Great. Um, Wasm Cloud is an open source runtime that sits on top of WebAssembly and adds uh, what amounts to an orchestration layer in an application runtime. It gives you uh, secure access to capabilities, and I'll talk about what capabilities are in a minute. It's horizontally and vertically scalable. But the thing that I think is most important about Wasm Cloud is that it moves the decision about the size and shape of your application from design and compile time to something that you can just adjust at runtime. Um, you should be able to take your monolith that runs on your laptop, turn a knob, and spread it out across uh, global distribution without having to recompile your code. Not sure why these are all animated. My skills with slides are uh, fantastic. All right. So the basic primitive when you're building applications with Wasm Cloud is what's called an actor. Um, they are inspired by the actor model. And the goal is to build your business logic in these units, uh, these WebAssembly modules that are um, freestanding and uh, tiny and portable and scalable and secure. And I've got a red asterisk next to components because at the moment the WebAssembly component model is still fairly volatile. So while we have support for this right now, uh, the developer experience isn't quite where I'd want it to be. Um, that's stabilizing soon uh, as the standards firm up. Um, but the short version is write your business logic, compile it to a WebAssembly module, and we call that an actor. Uh, capabilities are a separation of the purpose of your code from how your code executes. So if I want to write code that talks to a key value store, 
I, my code should not have to care about how it communicates with that key value store or even what key value store it is. All I want to do is get and set data, and that's it. So this decouples the libraries from business logic, and we cryptographically sign them. So the actors that are running in Wasm Cloud <clears throat> have an explicit grant of privileges. So in addition to the WebAssembly sandbox and uh, all of the other security you get, uh, Wasm Cloud will prevent any WebAssembly module from talking to a capability that it's not supposed to. Wasm Cloud also comes with what we call a lattice. It's essentially the WebAssembly version of a cluster. It's a flat topology with no discovery required. So um, every one of the actors that you've deployed, regardless of where you deployed it or how you deployed it, is accessible on this cluster. And you can simply communicate it with it, and it just works. Uh, a lot of that is enabled by NATS, which is another um, CNCF project. Has anybody heard of NATS? OK. I'm definitely in the right room. All right, so let's do some demos. So the first thing I want to show is this, which is a dashboard that Wasm Cloud provides. This is, I'm essentially looking at a uh, Wasm Cloud host. And you can see I've got a couple of actors in here my list of capability providers. I've got a web server, uh, event sourcing, which I'm going to show in a minute, and also uh, Redis. And these actors are linked to these providers through uh, configuration that's, all, that's uh, set up down here. And I don't want to go through all the low-level details, but one thing that I think is important to point out here is that the actors don't own the, the abilities. So when I'm building a microservice in Go, and you know it, it has a RESTful API, and it talks to a SQL database, when I build that, it owns my choice of client for the database, and it owns the web server, and it owns how the web server starts, what port number it picks. All of that stuff is in my application, and I own it whether I like it or not. What Wasm Cloud does is make it so that the infrastructure owns the abilities, and your code just works against the abstractions. So it's kind of hard to tell from here, but the echo actor and the KB counter actor are both using the same web server ability. They just have different configurations. The KV counter actor and the bank account projector are both connected to a Redis key value store, but three different configurations. So if, let's say I have a logging ability and there's a giant vulnerability in the log uh, application or in the log library, instead of having to take every single team that has that dependency, force them to stop what they're doing, and make them put the patch fix into their release cycle, I can just change the, the ability at runtime, and none of the actors know about it, and I only have to change it once. So I could, I could literally swap this Redis uh, provider out for Cassandra, and none of the actors would know, nor would they miss a message. So the first actor is the echo actor, and in, in typical fashion, I'm just going to demo some JSON here. And uh, this is, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to figure out how to zoom in on the new browser. But um, basically, I'm just running, I'm accessing my actor. And if I take a look at the code for this, This is the entire thing. Everything else is just you know headers and, and things like that. This, this actor is a WebAssembly module that, is, that declares that it talks to a web server. It takes a web request as input and returns an HTTP response as output. There's nothing else here. 
Uh, you don't, there's no port number, there's no TLS termination, there's no certificates. All of the stuff that my code should not care about is missing from this. So the next one that's also running in this web, in this uh, post, is this thing called a key value counter. And the key value counter is similar to the Yatgo actor, except it's receiving a web request, incrementing a value in a key value store, and then returning that data. And if I look at that one, you'll see it's got a little bit of um, RESTful API here. And then when it increments the counter, that's it. Sorry, I'm having some trackpad issues. I just call increment on my abstraction, and then the runtime takes care of the rest. So when I call increment here, it could be uh, in the middle of a unit test, in an acceptance test, in, on my laptop, using it in memory store, or um, like I'm using now, it's in Redis. And let me see if I can just to show that. Yeah, there's my KubeCon counter. So apologies for the typing. All right, so that's just wanted to show you that uh, there's nothing up my short sleeves. So we've got the counter and we've got uh, an echo and uh, all of this is rigged up through Wasm Cloud Host. And you get one of these just by typing wash up. The wash is the command line tool for Wasm Cloud. So let me see if I can get back here. So, all right. So with Wasm Cloud, you saw that we can build uh, fully functional applications, microservices, functions as a service, uh, monoliths, fully distributed systems, all just using simple WebAssembly modules. And <clears throat> they can deploy to anywhere from anywhere. And one of the really powerful things about Wasm Cloud isn't that it is an, just an end goal for building applications, it's that you can build uh, your own capabilities. So we saw that uh, web server is a capability and key value store is a capability. There's things like message brokers and SQL databases and I even wrote a Telnet one because that's just how nerdy I am. And event sourcing is actually a capability that uh, we added to uh, Wasm Cloud. So uh, who here has heard of or used uh, event sourcing? Uh, keep your hand up if it was a horrible, painful experience. Yep, um, that's as expected. Um, so the key pieces of event sourcing is that reality is event sourced. Everything that happens in the world has already happened. It's in the past. And we take that same concept and apply it to an application and say that the state of the, our application is derived as a fold or you know, just some function across the stream of events. Um, event sourcing is the strict and opinionated version of some other buzzwords that you've probably heard, like event-driven, CQRS, and so on. There's a, there's a level of rigor and discipline uh, jump between just having a reactive app or an event-driven app to being event-sourced. What that usually means is there are rules that you shouldn't break that everyone breaks. Um, event sourcing or event sourced apps are built out of a bunch of primitive uh, Lego blocks that you stitch together to form your app. There are aggregates, projectors, process managers. Uh, the terminology gets a little muddy when we talk about I.O. I refer to them as, as gateways, which are made up of notifiers and injectors. And uh, Concordance is the name of the open source event sourcing capability provider that Cosmonic created. So why do we actually care about event sourcing? Um, especially when it comes to distributed systems, 
one thing that we always want is a single source of immutable truth. Uh, having built applications that have caught fire in production many times, one problem that we typically run, in, run into is not only do we have multiple sources of truth in, in production, but we have multiple conflicting sources of truth. And that usually ends up uh, producing a bad experience for the people trying to use your app. Another thing that's uh, sort of a different mindset between the quote unquote regular application and an event sourced one is that failures are actually modeled as events uh, rather than things that we suppress inside a try catch block. Um, they're designed for evolutionary architectures. Uh, one of the phrases you may have seen on some blog posts is that event sourcing is all about choreography, whereas the traditional model of microservices is about orchestration. And uh, finally, and probably one of the more important ones, is that with event sourcing, not only do you have the state of your application, but you have how that state came to be and why uh, it is what it is. And that helps for a number of reasons, but uh, a lot of times it's just there to make, uh, to make auditing and compliance rules happy. But uh, in, in the demo, I'll show some of the other reasons why having those is, is important. Uh, so those of you who kept your hands up when I asked if your uh, event sourcing attempts had been horrible dumpster fires, uh, a lot of times when people build event sourced applications, um, they fail. And people, uh, I've been in this boat before where I've blamed event sourcing for the failure. Uh, so when we do event sourced applications, we have to do a little bit more upfront work. It requires more uh, design. We have to model the flows through the system rather than just the data that we read and write. Uh, a lot of times for very small applications, event sourcing is uh, way too much. It's overkill and it ends up uh, taking too much time to maintain, so people throw it out. And uh, like I said, there is a, a pretty big penalty for doing it wrong. Uh, you can get all the way to production and have your event sourced system fail in completely unexpected yet horrible ways. And another one is that event sourcing is just not the default way people build applications. So usually you have to have uh, teams ramp up on uh, how to build it and uh, you know, how to follow the right patterns. So first primitive uh, Lego block that I mentioned is an aggregate. Uh, aggregates in an event source system, they take commands and convert them into events. So in other words, a command will ask the system to do something, and when the aggregate validates the command, it emits an event saying this, this actually occurred. Aggregates have their own state, and um, part of the, one of the many reasons uh, where we fail is aggregates are purely functional. They must not have side effects, and they cannot do work. And uh, probably the number one failure I see with event sourced apps is aggregates that, that commit side effects. Projectors are designed to build the read model for your application. In an event sourced app, you know, rather than the consumer of your app making a query and your code doing some kind of a join on a database, uh, with an event sourced system you can generally anticipate what data your customers are going to need and what shape that's going to take. So rather than building that ad hoc when they query, an event source system will build that when the data changes. So every time an event comes through, a projector will take that event and create a read model. And I'll show some of that in, in the demo. You can choose whatever you want to do for storage because these projectors are also uh, WASM Cloud components, you have access to all the capabilities that regular actors do. So you can use key value stores, SQL database, there's um, access to blob stores, and so on. 
Uh, you can regenerate your projections on demand. Uh, this is another thing that kind of scares people, is that you can completely blow away all of your application state and no harm done. You just run through the events again and regenerate your app state. And that's actually, I don't have enough time to demo that, but that's how you actually migrate schemas. Uh, projectors are stateless with an asterisk in that the projector doesn't maintain state. All it does is build the read model, which is external state. Process managers, some of you may have heard the term saga before. Uh, process manager is essentially the strict opinionated event sourced version of a saga. And their job is essentially the opposite of an aggregate. They take events and convert them into commands. So they monitor when things uh, take place, and then if something else needs to happen as a result, the process manager kicks that off through a command. And the reason that I've got the dominoes here is that typically what you see in production for any large event source application is one command may go through and then any number of process managers will kick off and you'll just see a, a massive stream, pun intended, of events that happen as a result. And I'll show some of this in the demo. But uh, it's a little scary because people uh, aren't used to having things happen uh, unattended that way. Uh, gateways. Uh, I'm not sure if gateway is an official term or if that's just what I call them. Uh, but you need to have uh, I.O. somehow in an event source system. If your aggregates can't do work, your projectors can't do work, the, uh, and your process managers can't have state, then you need dedicated primitives that are designed to deal with I.O. as a side effect in a way that doesn't actually pollute your event stream. And uh, that's a whole... It's a whole separate, uh, could be a whole separate talk. So the sample that I'm going to walk through is, well, event sourcing is a little hard to do in Hello World because it's inherently more complex than that. So one of the simpler apps that you can do in event sourcing is banking. So we have an account aggregate, and uh, like I said, they take commands. So you'll see commands like create account, deposit funds, reserve, release, and so on. The aggregate then emits the past tense version of those commands. Now, there isn't always a one-to-one -one correlation, but uh, it's, it's pretty common. So we get account created, funds deposited, things like that. The, the domain doesn't really matter too much. Um, it's just a domain that's simple enough for me to be able to demo some of this. And then the process manager, in response to a number of events, will kick off more commands, which could then produce more events, and so on, hence the domino analogy. Uh, is anybody familiar with cloud events? All right, so cloud events, uh, there's a, a booth for them out there. Um, it's a CNCF project that defines a standard envelope for event data. And so Concordance uses that. So uh, part of the problem with a number of event source systems is the events themselves aren't, um, you can't reflect over them, they're not introspectable. So by having them as simple JSON payloads, uh, it's easy for both humans and machines to read them. The big, the important bit here is you can see the type of the event, which is used for event dispatch. And so this is a simple command handler in the aggregate. And similar to the pattern that we saw with the web server that takes a request and returns a response, this function, withdraw funds, takes a command and returns a list of events. So it takes the withdraw funds command and returns a funds withdrawn event. And there's some business logic in here to make sure that I can't withdraw beyond my available balance. But what's missing here, uh, and that's a good thing, is 
I don't see uh, any information about how these messages are dispatched. I don't, I'm not explicitly publishing events. I'm not publishing commands. I'm not communicating with a state store. All of that is taken care of for me by the concordance capability provider so that I can write simple unit testable functions that take predictable input and produce a predictable output. Uh, the same goes for uh, applying events to an aggregate. Uh, when you apply an event, you, the event goes into the aggregate and it uses that to mutate its own internal state. So here, we take the funds withdrawn event and couldn't be simpler, we subtract the event amount from the current balance and that's it. There's, this thing doesn't know about read models, doesn't care about them, doesn't have any code to talk to Kafka or event buses or anything else. It's just a function that we can test. And uh, is anybody familiar with WIT and the component model? All right, one or two hands. This, uh, I, I mentioned that this is where dragons are because this is super early and very volatile right now. The, both the WIT spec and the support for component model in WASM time is changing rapidly. But the reason why I wanted to show this slide is that in the near impending future, we'll be able to define your entire event sourced model in terms of, um, hopefully that doesn't mean I'm running late on time, but you'll be able to define your model in terms of the simple interface contract and the code generation will take care of everything for you. All right, so uh, I showed at the bottom, you've got WebAssembly runtimes, uh, uh, WASM time, Whammer, there's probably a, a half a dozen fairly common WebAssembly runtimes. Uh, that's gray because we don't care. That's just something that's taken care of for us. WASM Cloud is the uh, distributed computing framework that sits on top of WebAssembly. Yeah, I must be running late. Concordance sits on top of that, and the code that you write is uh, just on top of that. So let's see if I can get through the actual demo here. Let me just show you what I'm going to do here. So this is going to send four commands into the event sourcing system. I'm going to create an account, I'm going to make two deposits, and then make one withdrawal. And what we should see on the other end of this is four permanently persisted events plus some projected state. So assuming the, the demo gods are with me. So that was super fast. Uh, that's intentional. Kind of why we built Wasm Cloud. The, uh, I, these go through a command dispatch, and if I view the event stream, and now you see why I wanted to use cloud events so that I can do stuff like this, you'll see that I've got an account created event, funds deposited, funds deposited, and funds withdrawn. And if I go into Redis, and if I can actually type so I've got a read model where I can query my current balance, which is $60. And then uh, I can pull the ledger, the entire ledger history out as a read model as well. So this essentially makes it seem, this is building a read model so that I can have my application consumers just get the data without any computation cost. It's a big O of one cost. Uh, sorry, I had to run through that. Um, so key takeaways here, uh, we should be writing features, not plumbing. If you find yourself writing plumbing, there, there is a better way. Uh, WebAssembly is the enabling technology that'll get you there, but like Docker and Kubernetes before it, WebAssembly is not the end goal. It's the tool you wanna use to get where you're going. Uh, you should 
try out building distributed applications on Wasm Cloud. Wasm Cloud has a bunch of connectors, including one to Kubernetes that lets you talk to your legacy applications. And you can build event sourced applications on top of Wasm Cloud via concordance. And there we go. All right. So uh, hopefully I have enough time for questions. I, well, I don't see the I'm out of time sign. So uh, let's see if we can do some Q&A here.